Hello everyone, my name is Walter Rowe, and today I'm going to illustrate how to migrate Apple Aperture libraries into Capture One catalogs. This is my sample Aperture library that I created to illustrate this process. Uh, there are some things that I'm going to show you in this outline right here on the screen. I'm going to leave this here, feel free to pause, read through this carefully, look back on it later and reference it some things you need to know about what comes over and what does not come over what is imported all of your color labels come over one note is that purple becomes pink and gray becomes purple uh, but all of the color labels do come over uh, your duplicate versions in aperture become capture one variants all of your keywords and all of your metadata your star ratings they come over. Uh, flags do not come over. If you have images flagged in Aperture, I recommend that you filter for all flagged images and that you add a special keyword to, your, to those images so that when you import them into Capture One, you preserve knowing which images were flagged in Aperture. Your keyword structure. Uh, I'm going to show you how to export your keyword list from Aperture and import it into Capture One. But you should note, when you look at the keyword field in Aperture, the keywords themselves are a simple flat list, and that is how they come over to Capture One. That's a defect in Aperture. Apple stopped developing Aperture in 2014. That's something that's never going to get fixed. I checked um, the new Apple Photos. Apple Photos has the same uh, deficiency. It seems that Apple's never going to get on board with structured keywords then that's really too bad. Uh, books, uh, slideshows, light tables, web journals, web pages, uh, image stacks, those do not come over. We have a concept of image stacks in Capture One, but it's a stack of variants for the same picture. It is not a stack of separate, like a sequence of pictures, uh, as you have in, uh, in Aperture. Okay, let's see here. So at the top, I talk about the recommended uh, workflow. Basically, I recommend that you create a working directory. Uh, the process is going to be that you're going to export projects or folders of projects at a time from Aperture into a temporary Aperture library. You're going to import that into a temporary Capture One catalog. You're going to do edits and validation of data and so forth in Capture One in the temporary catalog. And then you're going to have a master Capture One catalog, which you're going to import the temporary catalog into. Using this workflow is going to enable you to better um, track your progress and get more familiar with Capture One as you go and not have to do all of this work in your master catalog. Okay, so we'll go back to uh let me go into capture one first so in capture one i'm going to create a new catalog it's, i've noticed i've got this working directory aa to co so in there i'm going to create a, a new catalog called photo masters not fought masters photo masters there we go <clears throat> excuse me so we create this new master catalog I'm going to go back to Aperture. I'm, I'm going to pop up my keyword heads up. I'm going to look, I'm going to just demonstrate for you that I do have a structured keyword list here. I'm going to export this. Notice I'm in the AA to CO uh, working directory that I created. This is actually on my desktop. I'll show you that I put this on my desktop. Uh, this is my working directory. I'm actually doing all of this illustration in this working directory. So I'm going to create a keyword list.txt. Save. I'm going to close this. Let's go over to Finder. Here you can see this keyword list. If you notice the keyword list itself, this is the, the industry standard for how you create a structured keyword list via text file. Uh, each nesting of keywords is a tab indent from the parent to the child. So I'll close that. So here you can see the text. Let me go back to uh, Capture One. Where's Capture One? Capture One. 
I'm in my master, my photo masters. Here I'm going to switch over to the metadata tool tab. I'm going to go to the keyword library tool and in the where it says keyword catalog catalog keywords I'm going to hit the little dot 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 which is called the action menu I'm going to import keywords from library in, into the library from a keyword text file I'm going to pick the keyword list text file that I just created from aperture I'm going to import it notice now you see the little diamond next to the catalog keywords and you can see the very structure that I had in Aperture is now here in Capture One. So nice, easy, simple, clean way to get all of your keyword structure from Aperture into Capture One. Marvelous. Well, now let's go back to Aperture. Let's pick a project. I'm going to pick just this one project here. I'm going to right click on the project. I'm going to say export. I'm going to say project as new library. Notice it wants to name the library default. By default, it's going to name it the name of the project. That's very handy. It's a nice, easy way to track what you have and haven't uh, migrated. Notice I'm not checking copy originals. I'm not checking copy previews. This is just a temporary library. I don't need any of that stuff. I want to leave the pictures where they are. I'm going to there. All of those pictures in this catalog are referenced. They're not managed. That's probably one step you want to really do before you migrate your Aperture library. Make sure all of your images are located outside the library. You want to have a library that's a referenced library. You do not want a managed library. Uh, I am going to show alert when finished. Uh, this will tell me if you were exporting a large uh, project that might take a while, uh, you need to know when it's actually completed so that you can go to the next step. Here we are, it's completed. Okay, perfect. Just do a little quick switch to library. Okay, we can see we're right in that library that we just created. Marvelous, that's what we wanted. Let's switch back to the master. Now I'm going to go to capture one. In capture one, I'm going to create a new catalog. One of the nice features of capture one that you don't have an aperture. You can open multiple catalogs at one time. You can open as many catalogs as you like. Here there's a, uh, it's got the working directory uh, because I've been doing this and practicing. So here we are, AA to CO, that's my working directory. And I'm gonna call this uh, the same name as the project that I exported from Aperture, Brian Rowe. Okay, we are now in Brian Row. If you go into the window, you'll see there's a Brian Row window and there's a Photo Masters window. So I'm going to go into the Brian Row window. That is the Brian Row catalog that I've just created. If I go back to Finder, you'll see there's a Brian Row Aperture Library and a Brian Row catalog. There's my keyword text file and there's my Photo Masters catalog. In my Brian Row catalog, I'm going to go under File, Import Catalog, Aperture Library. This little pop up tells you exactly what Capture One is going to import from the Aperture Library. If it's not on this screen, Capture One is not importing it. Okay, I'm in this pop up dialog. I'm going to select the Brian Row Aperture Library. I'm going to import. Okie dokie, great. Now you notice this pop-up says 70 files, but the activity screen says 71. That's because I had two versions of one file in my Aperture library. I purposely did that to illustrate that versions come over as variants. So if I select images, the all images, and I scroll down, you'll see here's a picture that has a little one and a two. These are each of the variants. Underneath, you'll see there's one name. The way Capture One illustrates that you have multiple variants or versions of a picture is it puts the file name, the single file name they're associated with, under every single one of them. Not separately, but it's one big long line. It, it'll center it under all of them. 
And if you have multiple versions that span multiple rows in your in your uh, thumbnail of the browser view, uh, it'll it'll do the corresponding it'll it'll display it per the correct way. You'll see if you try it. I'm not gonna not gonna do it here. Anyway, uh, so we do have this concept of stacks in uh, Capture One. Let me go over here. You'll see in the user collections, this is where we have our organization capability in the user collections. Down below, we have folders. This is the actual place on disk where your pictures are stored. Um, so you notice that there's, <clears throat> notice that it says the files is actually 71. So the file count will include the number of uh, variants that you have, not just the physical files. So it's always going to, they're always going to total up to the total number of images. We have in the organization of user collections, I'm going to just close folders so we have that out of the way. Notice that the top level is called Brian Row. That's the name of the temporary aperture library that I imported. Under Brian Row, you're going to see that I have the structure that was in the Brian Row temporary catalog. The top level music, and then it's got the project. Of called Brian Rowe, and then it's got the folder called Bonnie Creek underneath it, and then you notice that it has the individual albums. Each of these are albums. So as I said in the outline screen, uh, and Aperture associates pictures with projects. Capture One associates them with albums. This is a very important distinction to know. Um, if you select an album, you see the pictures in the album. If you select a folder, here's another difference in, in the way Capture One displays things. If you select a folder, you do not see everything underneath the folder. Even if you select a folder outside of a project, you don't see everything in the folder. If you select a project, a project will show you all of the pictures in all of the albums contained within that project. So we have our temporary Brian Rowe catalog. Now I want to import my Brian Rowe catalog into uh, my master catalog. Let's assume that I've done my edits. I've done any metadata uh, fixing up that I want to do here. Now I'm going to go under the window, select my photo. Um, actually, I'm going to close this window. I want to make sure this is closed before I import it into my master. So I close the temporary. Now I'm back at my masters. In the masters, I'm going to go under file import catalog capture one catalog this is the temporary capture one catalog that we imported the temporary aperture library into here i'm going to select the temporary capture one catalog and go import here it is importing okay here we go here's all the pictures And it's going to go through and it's going to make its previews and things of that nature. Now let's go back to Aperture. Let's pick the next project. Now we'll go to, uh, let's go to, actually let's do this folder since it has only one, uh, one project inside of it. And I'll just say export folder as new library. So I'll just do the whole batch. Notice it's named, the, the name of the folder is the name of the library it's going to suggest. I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and do it. It's again in my working directory. Okay, it's done. I'm going to go back to Capture One. I'm going to, I'm in my master catalog. I'm going to create a new catalog. I'm going to call it Professional. Just like uh, the name of the temporary library. I'm going to say, open in a new window. Notice it's going to be in my working directory. Okay, here's my temporary catalog. I'm going to go under Aperture, Import Catalog, Aperture Library. I'm going to choose the library that we just created. It's going to bring it in. Brought in all the pictures. Notice we have the, the disk structure here. You can see where they're stored on disk. We have the user collections. Notice in this case that the top level is the name of the folder 
uh, I'm sorry, the top level is the name of the Aperture library. Underneath there is the actual structure that was within that library, which is the structure that we exported from our master library. We could actually take this and drag it outside so that we have the exact structure within the Aperture library represented within the Capture One catalog. And we can delete this from this temporary catalog. So now we're back at just the structure we had exactly in um, Aperture. Sorry for the pause. So let's go ahead and close this. We know that all the pictures are here. Here's all the pictures from that project, from that actual folder. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And this is back to my master. I'm going to go under File, Import Catalog. This time I'm going to import Capture One Catalog. I'm going to select Professional, Import. Here we're importing. OK, they're imported. So if you notice, my total all images is now the total of both of the libraries that I, imp that I migrated over from uh, Aperture to Capture One. Here again, I have this uh, imported, you can see that where it says imported. This is the name of the, of the Capture One catalog I imported. So I'm going to go over here to the user collections. I'm going to recreate the structure that I had in my Aperture library. OK, so I can get rid of this. I can get rid of this. And here you can see now I have the same structure that I had. I can even sort this by name. Actually, I this this top level actually you can't sort by name as, as I now remember. <laughs> I did this once before. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted it outside of there. I want to put this up here. Okay, there we go. So now they're sorted, uh, but within there I can sort by name. Oops, look at there. Yes, I can sort by name. Sorry. Sort by name. I had multiples here, I could say sort by name. And there they're sorted by name. And if you notice, when you go to Aperture, Aperture always sorts by name. There they are, sorted by name. Here they are, sorted by name. So I hope this has been helpful to illustrate the process for migrating your Aperture libraries into Capture One. I highly recommend using the temporary libraries and catalogs uh, as your work area. It helps preserve the integrity of your master aperture library. It helps in preserve the integrity and, and not bog down working in a, in a large catalog in, in uh, Capture One. Uh, you want to use that really as your final resting place. Uh, if you like uh, these videos, please leave me a message in the comments uh, to that effect. If you have any questions, please also ask those in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you are looking to purchase an upgrade or a new license for Capture One or Styles or subscription, I would appreciate your using the link in my, uh, in my uh, profile on YouTube. Uh, that will uh, give me just a small referral fee. And I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to sharing more information with you in future videos. Thank you.